welcome to New Slick. I'm Paranjoy Guha Thakurta. Today, I'm honored and privileged to have with me all the way from Mumbai, Mr. Julio F. Ribeiro. Well, he really needs no introduction, but nevertheless, I should mention that he was the former commissioner of police of Mumbai. He headed the police force in Punjab, in Gujarat, and he was also India's ambassador to Romania. He's had two assassination attempts on him, and he's only 91 years young. Thank you so much, Mr. Ribeiro, for giving the viewers of News Slick your time. Let me start by asking you, what prompted you to write this letter to the police head, the commissioner of police, Delhi, Mr. S. N. Srivastava, who's a member of the Indian Police Service. And you have mentioned that the police investigation into the communal riots that took place in Northeast Delhi in late February, that this investigation was being done in an absolutely shoddy manner. You said, I write to you with a heavy heart that true patriots are being entangled in criminal cases. And those who are responsible for provocative, communal, hate-filled, incendiary speeches, including uh, uh, leaders of the Bharti Janata Party, they have been allowed to get away scot-free. And you urged the police force to ensure that there was a fair investigation and there was no bias and hate against those belonging to a minority community, notably Muslim. What prompted you, sir, to write this letter, this open letter to the Commissioner of Police, Delhi? See, I write every week for the Tribune of Chandigarh and there, one of the readers he wrote back, I mean, he sent me a letter saying that you write every week, but you have never ever mentioned that the Delhi police are uh, sort of becoming the laughing stock by uh, doing things topsy-turvy, making black into white. And they mentioned these, uh, these, particular, these same things that you have mentioned about the investigation that they have left off, uh, let off the uh, culprits. So I uh, did reply to him, one gentleman called Mr. Malik, I, I think. And uh, I, I said that, look, I too feel like that because from what I read and what I saw on the television, ever since the JNU and the uh, Islam Milia, uh, Jamia Milia Islamia. Jamia Milia. Ever since that, uh, I've got a feeling that uh, they have be been one-sided. For example, in the JNU, I saw hooded men going into the uh, campus. They probably were leftists and they were prosecuted. But the later on, a much bigger hooded uh, group, much bigger, they were allowed by the police to come in. Uh, that was for revenge, obviously. And they belonged to the right-wing group. But nothing was done against them. And they were, in fact, allowed to come in and come out, go out uh, very freely. So I was wondering, uh, what is this type of policing? It is our job. And we have been taught that, that whoever commits an offense has to be charged, has to be taken to task. Otherwise, the rule of law is never established. And in case the political parties, because many of these culprits have political affiliations, they try to influence you or interfere in the investigation, you must be able to say, no, I'm sorry, this is the evidence on record. And, uh, uh, every, and in this case, it was all seen on the television. So I'm not, I really wonder how the police can get uh, can absorb one group and take only the other mm -hmm. i think the other also needs that was that was done but not this uh, main group yeah Mr. so Ribe then i okay yes please continue please continue i have some questions no i have i am part of a group of uh, old 
uh, IAS and IPS officers, including other central services, including the, uh, the, the foreign service also. And these are officers of uh, integrity and uh, they are persons who do not take these kind of sides who have been true to their oath that they uh, do not get influenced by uh, politics or by uh, religion and things. They are not supposed to get influence. You are policemen and you are supposed to establish the truth. And these officers were always also debating this matter. Finally, they approached me. They said that, look, I said, yes, I know about it. I've read about it. And they, and they suggested that I, uh, this would be a very good uh, way to uh, tackle this because the police commissioner must take heed. And they said, if you write, it would probably uh, be, uh, be uh, attract his attention, which I did. Uh, Mr. Rivero. That is why I wrote. Yeah. Okay. You know, after you wrote the letter, a number of other senior uh, officers of the Central Services, including senior officers of the Indian Police uh, Force, uh, the police services have, have endorsed your views and added to that. Uh, let's look at some of the facts. There were Hindu Muslim riots, there were communal riots in northeastern Delhi. And between the 23rd of February and the 26th of February, at least 53 people died. There was one police officer, but out of the remaining 52, 40 were Muslims. Yes. Now we saw a lot of property, especially property belonging to Muslims were destroyed. Yes. Subsequently, the police have lodged over 750 first information reports. Over a hundred charge sheets have been filed and over 1,400 people were arrested or detained. But significantly, Mr. Kapil Mishra, who made a very, very provocative speech standing next to a senior police officer. He was a, a deputy commissioner of police. His name was Ved Prakash Surya. Anurag Thakur, who happens to be a minister of state in the finance ministry. Parvesh Verma, another important BJP leader. They made very, very provocative, hate-filled, inflammatory speeches. But the police have chosen to completely ignore their provocative speeches. What does this say, sir? So when you talk about police, uh, political interference in the police force, and we know that the Delhi police comes directly on the Ministry of Home Affairs, comes under the Ministry of Home Affairs, under the Union Home Minister, Mr. Amit Shah. What does, what does this mean? Uh, I've written about it. I, that was part of my letter, which is so blatant that these gentlemen could speak. I've heard it on television myself, uh, these gentlemen talking in the most provocative manner. And I think that if they had any sense of uh, fairness or justice, the uh, Delhi police should have first taken up these gentlemen and said, look, and the, if the uh, political masters had said that, look, uh, you can't do this and do that, they said they, they'll have to, they will have to show the proof that is on the television. How are you going to explain that? And then uh, you have to take action when people like this actually provoke the riots. It, leading up to the riots, it are these statements that have caused the people to get, um, you know, heated up. So I, I really su am surprised that they were let off in this manner. You know, in the letter that uh, was written by uh, a number of senior retired officers who endorsed your letter, they pointed out how a special commissioner of, of police, uh, they haven't named him, but I'm naming him Praveen Ranjan. He, in, a, in an official letter, had says there were Hindus who were resentful of investigation, of inve who, 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 who were resentful of the way the investigation into the riots were going on. Now tell me, should a police officer put down these kinds of statements on the record? And, and the Delhi police justifies it and says this is 
Uh, I mean, I mean, there's nothing wrong with what he said. I mean, they use, of course, very, very uh, clever language. But should a police officer be mentioning, uh, the, uh, should be making such statements? Up? I think he was carried away probably by the fact that he had to be on the right side of the people that judge uh, who, who are uh, masters of his own destiny. I think that is what must have uh, provoked him to do that because it is rather funny that an officer should show his true feathers. Anyway, so, uh, but, you know, the evidence that is going to be put up in court, you said some charge sheets have already been laid on in the, in the courts. So what is the evidence against these people? That has to be seen because once the trial starts, the evidence will all come out, whether the same enthusiasm has been shown when prosecuting one group of people has been shown while prosecuting the others. So that we would like to see. And what is the evidence against those you are going to charge for conspiracy? I mean, that is another um, point that also people are very eager to see because if they have evidence as they say they have, then they should show it. They should not prolong the inquiries anymore. Why was Umar Khalid, for example, not arrested much earlier? He, because if you think you have got evidence against him, please prosecute him and show us what evidence you have. But to arrest people at the, just before the three month time, you know, there is a timeline fixed for uh, laying the charge sheet. And if you just before that, if you arrest people, then you get another three months. That's another uh, unfortunate part of the whole thing. So this is the loophole that they exploit in order to keep people in custody without trial. That is another thing that I find being commonly used by the police, which is absolutely unfair. Yeah. Tell me, sir, on this issue of the law, I'm going to ask you some more questions. But do you think in today's day and age, we still need a law against sedition, which was enacted during the, the colonial era. Do we still need a law which many people consider draconian, which gives the police huge powers and it's and is to be misused like the UAPA, the Unlawful Activities Prevention Act? Do you think it's about yes. time these laws were removed from our statute books. As far as the sedition law is concerned, I think uh, the general consensus is it, that it should go because it is being most, more often than not misused. And the balance of convenience uh, if you, is to totally abolish this law. And you can always have other sections of law if you think that people are provoking others to really uh, go against the state because most of these people have not gone against the state or they have not shown signs that they want a big uh, riot or something. The people who actually provoke, those only should be, could have been charged with sedition, but nothing of that sort is done. And then, you know, it is selectively used. These laws are selectively used. And I think it is time they go. So, if you look at the people who have been arrested, young people, young students, uh, Devangana Kalita, Natasha Narwal, both students of Jawaharlal Nehru University, part of the Pinchra Toll movement, Gulfishta Fatima of Jamia Milia Islamia. Uh, when you look at, you mentioned Omar Khalid. When you look at the people who have been picked up and put behind bars, Safura Zarga, she was pregnant when she was put behind bars. And they are the ones against whom the police are proceeding. And not only that, they haven't been charged, but they, are being, they have been questioned, they have been named in the various uh, uh, the, the documents that are doing the rounds. People like Harsh Mandar, Professor Apurvanand, filmmakers Rahul Roy, Sabha Dewan, they've been questioned. Uh, uh, economics Professor Jayati Ghosh, and not only that, you, you have the lawyers, Mah Mahmood Pracha, who has been uh, representing some of the 
the, the people who, are, uh, who, who have been uh, affected. And then you have political leaders like Sita Ram Yechuri, like Yogendra Yadav. I mean, is there a, a, a method in the manner in which individuals, young students have been selected and put behind bars and now escalating it to academics, to political leaders because of their opposition to the present regime and their opposition to laws like the CAA, the Citizenship Amendment Act. You know, in this I see a very clear political hand because uh, I don't think, I mean, with my experience of 36 years, of course, I'm uh, 30 years <laughs> behind now. And uh, uh, perhaps things that are happening today are much worse than in my time. But uh, uh, political leaders would, would have a hand in trying to, uh, to decide who should be prosecuted and who should not be in such circumstances. So I'm, I'm quite sure that uh, the police would not normally have arrested uh, political leaders and all without consulting their political masters. Uh, this is uh, mm -hmm. almost certain. So, so in, in other words, uh, you are pretty sure that the police will not act against the likes of Kapil Mishra and Anurag Thakur and Parvesh Verma. No, to... against them they won't. Against them they won't. You know, there have been a large number of other uh, important political leaders of the BJP who have been named by some of the victims in their in, in their depositions, including Satyapal Singh, he's a member of parliament from Bhagpat. We have Nand Kishor Gujjar, he's an MLA from Loni, Mohan Singh Pish, he's an MLA from Delhi, uh, Jagdish Pradhan, former MLA, all of them belong to the BJP and, and, and various complaints have been made against them. You think they're going to get away? I, thought, I think they will, because it all depends on who is in power. The law is not enforced against those who support those in power. Right? That is the unfortunate part of our rule of law. Rule of law means those who commit crimes should be arraigned before a court of law. But that doesn't happen in our polity. So we've seen communal rights. It used yeah. to happen, but now things have changed. Yeah. Uh, sir, we've seen terrible communal riots in this country. In Delhi in November 1984, around 6,000 Sikhs were selected yeah. and they were brutally massacred. It was like the genocide, yes. a pogrom. Uh, many, many Congress leaders were allegedly behind it. Now, in Gujarat in 2002, you, you you headed the police department in Gujarat. Uh, you've been in, uh, the, headed the police department in Punjab. In Gujarat, at least two, uh, 700 Muslims were killed in 2002. Uh, what we are seeing, uh, I mean, although the scale was less, I mean, so far there have been, uh, as, as we mentioned earlier, as I mentioned to you earlier, in northeastern Delhi, 53 people died between February 23rd and 26th. Uh, including one policeman and of the remaining 52, 40, uh, 40 were Muslims. Uh, are we going to see the same story getting repeated over and over again whenever we come to these kinds of communal, uh, conflict, uh, communal conflicts, communal rights? In fact, I have a... I have a... Uh, apprehension that it might be a little worse now at least the hate levels today in the slums of mumbai for instance is has increased exponentially and i got a, I have a friend of mine young gentleman called sanjay nar and he, he talks to me often from pune i've known him for many years and he was uh, he had set up a an NGO to look after the orphans of the people in JNK. You know, he says that the, uh, the level of hate that has now been generated is something that he has never seen before. And so do the, um, uh, the people in the Mohalla Committee movement in Mumbai. They also tell me that it is something that you, have, you can never imagine. So if this is the way that we are going to go about, I mean, that all that sabke saath, sabke vikas, sabke vishwas, 
all that is just wool over our eyes and uh, it is going to uh, react and rebound on us very very badly in case there is a uh, god forbid uh, hostilities with our powerful neighbor on the east <laughs> this kind of divisions in our society are not going to help a bit on the contrary it will be exploited by the enemy so i think that there is a very very dangerous kind of movement that is now in order to capture votes i presume and for that we are going to sacrifice the future of our country i'm really i i really grieve for my country so in your letter where you write to the delhi police commissioner with a heavy heart urging a fair probe into the uh, investigation fair investigation you have said these police officers they've they've taken an oath they've sworn yes. to uphold the constitution of this country i mean they are supposed to take action uh, on the merits uh, on the merits of individual cases irrespective of the religious faith the political affiliation any affiliation of the people who are suspected or accused but are we today seeing even the communalization of the police force and i give you one example and i ask you to comment on it the recently retired uh, former acting director of the central bureau of investigation cbi uh, mr nageshwar rao he put out a heat filled tweet after the demise of swami agnivesh now now we were shocked people were shocked later he put it down but to expect a former ips officer i mean you may have disagreements with swami agnivesh the person has passed away he's died was it necessary to even make a statement like you know i wish the god of death uh yam uh, yam raj had taken him away earlier i mean i mean how do you react to a, a, a former police officer making these kinds of uh, public statements sir? i don't know i never heard of this gentleman till he made till he uh, became the director of cbi at that time also he was showing signs that he is aligned to a certain party so that is not a good thing you can't be aligned even if you feel you can give a vote to, to that party there there is it's your choice but not uh, show openly that you are aligned with a party because you are supposed to be uh, quite distant from political um, uh, you know the politics of the day you are supposed to enforce the law and and enforce it fairly so he's obviously not a person who is true to his oath and uh, uh, as regards the this that he has made that i read i read that and uh, i was surprised because a whole old hindu culture does not permit somebody to make remarks about someone who has already died so obviously hinduism is not what he follows uh, the type of hinduism he follows is something else i don't know what you call it you know i was yeah. on a i was on a television channel which is particularly supportive of the ruling regime and they were discussing uh, this uh, uh, omar khalid's case and his alleged affiliation with a sort of a, a, a muslim extremist group on the basis of a of of a of a conversation as soon as i mentioned the name julio ribeiro the anchor and some of the panelists they got into a wild fit he said what does mr ribeiro know you know i mean yeah he's not been around for a long time you yourself said it's been 30 years since you stopped being a police officer are you retired as a police officer and then then he says oh he has passed on fake information about attack, attacks on churches attacks on christians he tried to trash you it seems your name still you know provokes some of our you know a uh, right wing i should say pro government uh, television so called anchors and their panelists i i i'm i would like love to have your reaction no I, i want to state very clearly that i have nothing against any political party not the neither the party in power now 
I mean, I've got great friends and I've got great respect for some of the BJP leaders I met in uh, Hita Bilashi, for instance, who was the head of the, who was the president of the BJP in Punjab when I was there. I, he is one of the finest men I have ever met. And I have great respect for him and I've written about it in my book. Great respect for Mr. Vajpayee also. And uh, he chose me to be the governor of JNK, which I turned down for reasons that I mentioned to him. I mean, particularly the work I was doing in Mumbai, because I was more interested in that work. And then, so I have nothing against the BJP as such. And when they do good work, for example, this government had that very good uh, uh, practice of sending money directly to the bank accounts of the of the of the beneficiaries which i thought was a very very good um, idea of theirs or a very good thing that they did and i praise it there's no question of my be of being in any way uh, but people who are totally and gross and don't paper over all the wrong things that somebody can do i mean when for example the congress government in uh, in power in Mumbai, when uh, when there were cash for transfers, I have personally written about it, about cash for transfers, and I said that this is a ridiculous way of 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 uh, running a government. And Mr. Sharad Pawar himself came and spoke to me about it and said he's going to stop it. So I can tell you that uh, I write against anyone who who does something wrong and which is unjust to the people of this country. No, there is no question, no question of taking sides. Uh, during the time you were the commissioner of police in Mumbai between 1982 and 1986, you talked about how some of your uh, subordinate officers were asked to release a high profile gangster because he was going to provide money to the, the <laughs> party of the chief minister during the elections. So uh, it's clear at that time the Congress party was in part. I, I don't know which chief minister you're talking about, uh, but uh, you are, you yourself have said from fighting terrorism in Punjab, you're now fighting corruption. Yeah. Well, you know, no, this was, this corruption was before I went to Punjab. It was the home minister who later became the chief minister. And he said, I'm the home minister of Maharashtra minus Mumbai city. So I said, sir, why, why minus Mumbai city? He said, you never listened to me. So I said, sir, there's no need for you to ask me anything if it is fair and just and according to law. But if it is not according to law, please don't ask me. I'm not going to do it. So the person you said that he wanted released, not only money, but also muscle. <laughs> the man had a lot of muscle. And then, so they wanted that for their election. And I said, it is not my job to, to help you in election. That was not the reason why I joined the police force, not to help people in their election. That is the job of the politician. You do your job, I'll do mine. And he huh? didn't like it. But incidentally, I must mention this, very important. Later on, when he became the chief minister, and uh, the poor man is dead now, but at that time, the, the, the then police commissioner invited all the retired commissioners for a big celebration of 150 years or something of the commissioner. And this chief minister presided. And he mentioned this in his talk to the policeman. He mentioned this. And he said, now I understand the importance of what he did. This is what he would actually spoke. Would you like to name him? Would you yes, like there is no problem. Uh, he is uh, um, uh, Mr. Deshmukh, Vilasrao Deshmukh. Okay, <laughs> the late Vilasrao Deshmukh. Uh, uh, yes. Mr. Mr. Ribeiro, I'm going back to a point I raised earlier. What the police force was the, during the time you were a senior police officer and what it is today, you think the big change that has happened is that it is now in certain parts of the country divided along religious lines. They've been communally polarized. Would you go along with what I say? You see, this communal feeling is something that is dormant among a lot of people. It's coming out now because it is being encouraged. But in the police force also, 
they come from the from the public so they had the, this people have that that little bit of a of a feeling against some other religion or community even caste wise so then but if the man at the top that is the police commissioner or the dgp of the state he is a person who is straightforward and is very clear that these things are not on they do the policemen are trained to follow their leader if you have a good leader who does not get involved in such uh, um, considerations i think they follow the leader if the leader gives them an order they will follow it and they will uh, they will ensure that it is done for example during the communal riots in 1984 in mumbai when i was the commissioner i told the chief minister i am going to pick up all the the kapos all the the you know the cutting edge leaders of the shiv sena all on one night and i called all my officers and told them you will if you let off one you will be in trouble they brought them all and the whole thing stopped the next morning everything was you see this is the way you should deal with communal riots put the actual people who are instigating behind bars immediately i did it in gujarat when there was the five months the army was there army was and the only thing they know is to apply the curfew order and the people were without jobs and then suddenly um, uh, they sent me there and i dealt with it like i would in mumbai i arrest all the people who are behind the the provocation on the on the all these communal types who who actually uh, foment all the trouble they are the ones who have to be put inside so so you are saying and i'm going back to where i started the reason yes. why the delhi police has not taken action against those who provoked the riots is because of the political pressure and political affiliation of these individuals whether i have no doubt about that that is i have no doubt about it whether it be kapil mishra or anurag thakur or parvesh and i can go on and on yes you are right all right my last question to you sir uh, you know there have been two assassination attempts on your life once in jalandhar in october 1986 and then when you were india's ambassador to romania in bucharest in august 1991 on both occasions these were sikh militants who were unhappy uh, with your actions as the head of the as the director general of police in punjab when you look back on your career and and you said that you you are writing public letters with a heavy heart you say you grieve for a country uh, which has where there's so much hatred and so much dangerous hatred that has been spread among large sections of the people including poor people what is the way forward what do you have to tell young people there are large numbers of people young old middle aged who look up to a person like you they look up to you as an officer of integrity who had no qualms of dealing with the likes of daud ibrahim or for that matter as you yourself mentioned a little while back shiv sena leaders what is the message that you'd like to give to individuals and who are today at the receiving end of a regime which is not just intolerant but arguably vengeful uh i can only tell you what i am trying to do here and with along with a number of old ips and ias officers and the people from the general you know from society who who feel like me the doctors and others that we have formed a, a trust mr bg deshmukh who was the former uh, cabinet secretary he was one of the co founders and he was uh, the person we we looked up to he gave us very sound advice and we uh, ensure that the young people in, in the colleges that they were uh, told about the two great problems that this country faces one is of course corruption and the other is communalism and if these two are not checked we will never be able to take our place at the at the at the uh, main table 
in the committee of nations we have been uh, impressing upon them that they should sh shun these two evils and and work together as young people as future leaders of this country and we do that almost every day and i think to some great extent to the people with whom we have interacted we have been successful the ones with whom we interact some of them have come back to us wanting to be more useful in actual work every daily attempts to talk to other students so we are trying to do that and i think if more people in different parts of the country uh, set up such uh, uh, ngos you may call it or even groups or whatever whichever way they want to structure it but that should be our attempt people like us who feel that this is not on that human beings are human beings and whether they uh, follow one religion or the other what does it matter there was no religion when man, men first came in the world it came much later when when homo sapiens started thinking about how he came there at all that was the time before that there was no religion and religion is this explanations for the unknown so unless they understand that and say that how can in different gods can make different people that's not possible even if you believe in the theory of creation. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you so much, Mr. Ribeiro. Yeah. Thank you very much for giving us your time and your messages. And I hope those who heard you and watched you would be inspired by what you've said. Thank you once again. And keep watching Newsweek.